Well, hey everyone, it's Saturday here and I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that the SD card that I ordered from Amazon has finally arrived. The bad news is that the rest of the stuff I ordered just hasn't yet. And uh, it just says preparing for shipping, which I don't even know what that means, but that's not important right now. What is, is the fact that I finally get to install my new digital hi-hats that Roland sent me like two weeks ago. They've been staring at me through every stream across the last couple of weeks, but uh, today is the day that we actually get them on the kit and get to find out if they've been what I've been looking forward to for so long. I'm sure they will be. Let's get to it. It's time for a bit of unboxing. Let's let's get into it. I'm excited. Let's uh let's have a look what we have. Okay. So first we have owner's guide, user manual. Very very good. Oh, okay. So first, what's this? Okay, we have a drum key, very very important. This is the USB extension cable for the hi-hats themselves. This is what appears to be the anti-swivel mount. This stops your hi-hat spinning. The VH13s and the VH12s both had this, but the VH11s and 10s, they don't have this. I have a feeling it's exactly the same ones that I've got from before, which is really good because it means I don't have to swap out the ones I've already got. So um, I'll just, yeah, put them aside. And this is it, friends. Now we get to finally see for the first time. I've never seen these before, not even in a store. So let's have a look. This is uh, this is the top hi-hat, what's known as the strike plate. Oh. So, okay, immediately the first thing that is obvious to me that I knew was gonna happen, all the previous models are 13 inches. Standard hi-hats for drums tend to be 14 inches. So. Roland has gone ahead and now made them 14 inches. Coincidentally or ironically, the standard hats that I use when I'm playing acoustically are actually 13 inches, so it's not been a, a big difference for me, but still very cool, still very cool. Ooh, interesting. Hmm, okay. I'll explain my thoughts as I go. I do know what they are, but I'm a little bit curious about them. What this is, if I could just get them open, if this is anything like the previous generations of hi-hats, and I'm guessing it probably is, standard drums and cymbals plug in via a normal stereo quarter inch jack, just like this one. You can tell it's stereo by the fact that it has two little rings around it. So instead of being just tip and sleeve, a TS cable, it's a TRS cable, tip ring sleeve. Now, the previous generations all ran on two of them. There was one that told the module if you were hitting the tip or the edge, and the other one told it if the symbols were open and closed. One was called the hi-hat cable, one was called the hi-hat control cable. It is very curious to me that, technically speaking, there are two circuits running here. It's actually labeled A and B. If I didn't know any better, I would assume that instead of just being the two sensors in them, there is now four sensors in them, or something like that, could even just be three. Either way, right now, this part doesn't seem very digital to me, but then again, I could be very, very wrong. I don't know what it's sending over those, those four connections. So, enough speculation. Let's keep going. All right, and here, here is the bottom. Now, this is very different. So, the top section, the strike plate, is definitely much nicer than the old ones. Um, it feels way more sturdy, like it feels really hard, like it almost feels like it's rubber over a metallic surface of some kind, and I guess that's kind of what they're going for, to try to emulate acoustic hats. But this is a whole new design, like this is completely different. There's still an edge sensor that runs from here to here, so this is the back side of the cymbal, that's the front side. That hasn't changed, and I wouldn't have expected that to change much, except that it does indicate to me that they're still using a ribbon sensor along this edge inside. Hopefully it's better protected than the old ones, because that was an issue with some symbols that it was the, the ribbon would eventually break. We'll see, hopefully not. The internals 
I'm I'm guessing. I'm guessing that these two A and B here. I'm guessing there's more sensors in here now. There's more of an array going on, and it's passing that on to the lower half. This guy here, and they will plug in via A and B. You can probably, possibly, I don't know if you can see in there, little little port going on inside there. Underneath here, here's the the guts, the innards of the lower half. Here is the USB connection that's going to run off to the uh, to the module. So that's pretty cool. There's also a function button here. I'm not entirely sure what that does. I think the digital ride has one of those as well. I'm not sure I've ever pressed it. I have a feeling even the snare drum has one, but um, we'll see. We'll see if we need that. And finally, the last part is uh, is this section here. So you can see the middle is kind of free from the edges and it has this up and down bit. Now, if you guys have seen my previous vlog when I received my VH13s, I pointed out that this thing going up and down is how the trigger knows at what position the hi-hat is open with your foot. Now, I've got to say, this one feels way more sturdy, whereas the other one's really, really free. You could almost, you could push it like really, really easily. So this one is definitely a bit more, bit more going on there. I don't know if that's good or bad, um, but it seems to be a very, very similar mechanism. They may have upgraded that, but that was never really, in my opinion, the problem with the old ones, if, if we use the word problem. That part worked pretty well. It was, the, it was the strike plate, not detecting how you were striking and how you were hitting and the velocities and things like that. That could have been improved. So hopefully that's exactly what's happened. And so these will go together like so. And there is our new digital hi-hats, the VH14Ds from Roland that we've got to go install. But before we can even put them in and make them work, we have to upgrade the module, my TD50 module. We're gonna do a firmware update, which is what I was waiting for the SD card for, so that they will uh, recognize this new bit of hardware. Let's get to that now. Update finished successfully. All right, so the next step is to turn the unit off. Turn it back on. It looks like it's worked. There are no drum kits loaded. I think that's normal because it's telling me that I've got to restore the factory settings. But first it says I've got to make sure that it actually took the update correctly. The module is completely updated and so we are good to go on that front. Now we can install the new hi-hats and see how they are. So here's the top of the VH12, which is the same as the VH13. These are 13 inches in diameter. This is the VH14. So they're only slightly different. You can, I don't know if you know if you can see that on the camera right now, but they're only subtly different. But when I install them here, I am worried. I'm worried they're gonna take up slightly more space surrounding. Actually, I think they'll be okay. I think we'll be, we've got enough clearance around everything. Actually, I think, I think we'll be all right. Do you ever wonder? Technically they're installed. I haven't plugged them in yet, but they're installed. I must admit they are so much bigger than my old ones. Yeah, they, they're sitting that much closer to me now, which is, which is weird. That's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. I mean, when I say that, I kind of get the feeling it's gonna take me like one stream. Yeah, it's just seeing that much that much bigger. And subtle differences like that do make quite a big difference when you're adjusting to new gear or a new kit or something like that. So we'll see. It, it hasn't changed the clearance of me hitting my tambourine pads, so that's fine. It also hasn't changed anything around here in terms of my mixer or the other drums that I'm hitting. But one thing I have noticed, not that it's a big deal, underneath my hi-hat, I do have my uh, DB90 metronome that I use when I'm practicing or I'm teaching and things like that. The display is just that little bit obscured now by the symbol, so <laughs> it's just a slight annoyance, but um, uh, I, if I lean back, I can see it. It's not that bad. I don't use it that much when I'm playing anyway, so it's not really that much of a, of a big deal. Send them back. Send them back. Too big. I'll get over it. Just as a side note, it's really obvious to me that my drums look incredibly dusty when I use my iPhone to film the display and the back of the unit and stuff. Let me just say, they're not actually that dusty at all. It just looks like that on the camera. So let's get off my back. It's time we plug the cable in. Here we go. This is flashing. 
I think it's gonna be a case of just trying them out now and, and seeing what happens. So, where's my headphones? They feel incredible. I was not expecting much of a difference at all. I didn't want to say that before and jinx it, but I wasn't expecting there to be too much of a difference between what they had prior and what they have now in how it sounded. Now, the one thing that has surprised me is how different they feel to play. They definitely feel more like acoustic hi-hats. This is the closest thing I've ever played to an acoustic hi-hat on an electronic drum kit. Like This is actually a, a little bit crazy. The way they... Whilst metal is obviously incredibly hard, a cymbal often has a bit of a bit of flexibility to it, especially when you talk about your hi-hats and the way that you can kind of manipulate it with your stick. It's only subtle, but it's there. This is um This has got that and that's a really really cool thing. They're also really sensitive. So the way I'm playing them, I don't feel like I have to really bury my stick to make it respond the way I used to have to half an hour ago. It means I'm going to have to get used to the fact that I'm not going to need to put as much effort into playing the hi-hats, which is really nice. It's a great thing. That's really cool. Now, in terms of the sounds, the sounds are pretty much the same. The final step, if I want to do it, is that I can upgrade my TD-50 to a TD-50X. Doing this apparently unlocks a ton of new sounds and a ton of new nuance to every instrument, and I've heard such great things about it from so many other drummers and from Roland himself, of course. But the truth is, to do that, I have to completely wipe my module and start all over again with new sounds, new kits, new everything. There are a few other benefits to me doing so. I'd say one day I'll end up doing it. It's just to, to know that I'm gonna have to start all over again and, and lose all my default sounds that I've, I've come to, to love on a stream. That's it's quite the sacrifice. But my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. I can't wait to be playing these for you guys on my next stream on Monday. I do think I'm going to head down here tomorrow and uh, and play a little bit just to just for my own for my own fun. This is awesome. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. I hope to do more vlogs very very soon. I've got so many cool ideas up my sleeves. So, stay tuned. Thank you all so much for your support as always and I'll see you in the next one. Give me that love. All right, here we go. Hey guys, I hope you're having a fit note. Hey guys, hey everyone. Hey everyone, no, I can't look at the screen, I gotta look at the... <laughs> Good news is that the SD card that I arri arrived, that I arrived from Amazon. The good news is that the SD card I ordered from Amazon f me. Come on, Mitch. Hey, everyone. That's bad. <sighs> Find the chair, Mitch. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone. It's Saturday here. Man, this blooper reel is going to be longer than the video. It's really exciting. <laughs>